my name is Andrew. Um, it's lovely to be with you uh, at this uh, fantastic uh, B-Belt 2023 event. I'm with you for the next 20 minutes or so, and uh, we'll be talking about and looking at the Sustainable Development Goals as a vehicle for English language teaching. Um, this is what we, or what I propose that we have a look at uh, in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, we'll start off by looking at the Sustainable Development Goals, what are they, and then how uh, they can impact uh, on the learning community, how we can use them, some ideas uh, in teaching, and then perhaps some ideas for how to get started. Um, so, Sustainable Development Goals, um, what are they? Well, essentially, they are uh, an urgent call for action by all countries. I'm sure that by now, most of you, all of you, have had some contact with at least the concept of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, but what they really are, uh, the bottom line, if you like, is an urgent call for action by all countries. Uh, and I think that's something that's important and it's something that, that um, we all need to bear in mind. Um, but what are they exactly? What are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Um, the idea behind them, obviously, uh, apart from being a, a, an urgent call for action, um, they're more like a plan, uh, a blueprint, it says here, to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all of us. And that's important as well, um, this idea of sustainability uh, in the future. And the, the goals um, have been put together to address the, the challenges that we face today, every day. Challenges such as poverty, such as uh, gender inequality, climate change, um, problems, issues with the environment, as well as issues uh, about peace and justice. So that's what they're there for. Um, and they are this sort of roadmap, this blueprint uh, to achieve a, a better and brighter future, a more sustainable future for everyone. And they uh, were established, they were set up in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly. And the idea is that the goals are achieved by the year 2030. Um, you may have heard of the, the 2030 agenda. Um, that's actually really now, in 2023, that's not that far away. Um, and they weren't just started in 2015 or set up in 2015. They can be traced all the way back to the Earth Summit uh, with 178 countries uh, in June 2000, uh, sorry, June 1992. Um, and uh, well, what are the goals? How many goals are there? Uh, again, you may well already know the answer to this question. There are 17 sustainable development goals and they address issues from poverty all the way up to um, partnerships. Uh, and here they are, um, all 17. Uh, we can see that there are uh, topics such as poverty, such as health and well-being, uh, equality, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, um, decent work and economic growth, uh, life below water, so what happens in, in oceans, climate action obviously uh, is, is, is very, very important, uh, as well as peace, justice and, and strong institutions. So here are the 17 sustainable development goals and each goal comes with its own logo, its own icon and importantly as well, its own colour uh, and that will become a, a bit more relevant later on. And uh, the idea here is that the goals themselves recognise that, that ending poverty and other inequalities and deprivations uh, must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education. So, and that's where we come in as educators um, to reduce inequality and to uh, to foment to to boost economic growth. Um, at the same time, tackling climate change and then working as well to preserve oceans and forests. But for us particularly, um, it's the idea that these goals must go hand in hand with education in order to achieve uh, a better, more sustainable future. That's the bit really 
that we're more concerned with or that impacts directly on us. Well, okay then. So, you know, a, a valid question could be or should be, why should our students know about the Sustainable Development Goals? Why as English teachers should we uh, be bothering our students about this? Um, and that's a very good question. And there are um, some very, very good answers. Um, the first point I think really is that the, the Sustainable Development Goals can you can be used as a lens yeah, uh, through which we can view the most urgent problems around the world. So in other words, these goals are a way of highlighting um, the problems that are most urgent to address um, as a global society. Things like the fact that millions of people don't have um, enough food to eat, um, that there is uh, still inequality between men and women, there are species that are disappearing um, practically every day, if not every day, plants and animals. Um, so we have all of these endangered species. Um, and, uh, you know, th 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 there's an increase between um, the haves and the haves and, and the have-nots. And that gap is actually increasing um, you know, all the time. Um, so, <laughs> interestingly enough, um, 40% of the world's population is aged between uh, 10 and 24 years old. And that's interesting and important because that is quite a, a big chunk of the world. And it also happens to be um, the ages of a lot of our students. So we're talking um, late primary, secondary, high school. Yeah? In fact, it's the largest population ever uh, of young people. and. In order for um, the world's problems to be solved, in order for these um, issues that the, the SDGs are highlighting, in order for them to be solved, the next generations need to know what they are. In other words, the population, the young population, aged between 10 and 24 years, and even younger, I would say as well. Um, so if we if we expect the younger, you know, the, the new generations to solve the problems, well, they need to know what they are. And then as English language teachers, uh, incorporating the SDGs into what we do has a number of advantages. Obviously, as well as making students aware of what's going on and the problems that are present in the world, it also provides a much wider and a more international approach to English language teaching and learning. It, it's very uh, easy to uh, to teach within our bubble of our particular context in our particular city in our particular country and uh, not be aware as English language teachers uh, of, of what's going around of what's going on around the world uh, and the problems or not being or being aware but then not bringing those into the classroom um, it, by by using uh, by putting the the SDGs as part of uh, the curriculum, uh, or part of what we're teaching, um, the the argument here is that we can help learners develop morally. Um, we can help them improve uh, their, their academic skills through activities that are related to the sustainable de development goals, which we'll have a look on a look at a bit further on. Um, it, they can motivate as well because these are problems really that concern all of us. And um, it's, I think it's, um, I think it's the responsibility of educators, and I include English language teachers as educators, to actually um, to, to bring this to our learners' attention. And the international um, aspect is evident through the fact that these are goals that concern every country in the world and the way that we communicate across countries is still through the use of English. Um, so there is the relevance there uh, for students. For teachers, it, it provides us, I think, with fresh material. Um, these are, the, well, this is material, the goals are not commonly seen in English language teaching material. So rather than you know going to the bank or in the supermarket or these very common situational or reading about Winston Churchill, then there's, um, the, the, the goals provide us with an opportunity to introduce fresh material into the classroom.
Um, and it also shows the relevance of English, as I said before. The sustainable development goals concern each and every country in the world. How we communicate those countries with those countries is via English. Um, and again, it provides uh, content, it shifts uh, learning uh, away from just learning the language, just the ABC, just the one, two, three, just the, the, the verb to be, and looks at something else. Um, this goes without saying, we're bringing real world issues and concerns into the classroom. Uh, very often the, um, the, the criticism of teaching materials is that they aren't really relevant, they aren't really suitable for particular contexts and for particular markets. Well, the sustainable development goals are suitable for every context and every market. Um, and again, these are issues that students uh, can know about. Uh, everybody knows about the environment, the oceans, and what they may not know is the importance of looking after the environment uh, and what they can do to help. Um, for the school, well, um, a curriculum or an English language program that includes the global development goals shows a positive or can have a positive influence on the local community in that it demonstrates a commitment to global issues. So the school is saying, hey, you know, we are uh, plugged into what's going on around the world and we understand the problems and we are attempting to raise awareness of the problems uh, in our curriculum and encourage our students to, to take action. Um, and it's an international focus uh, to teaching English. Uh, in addition, parents uh, see institutions more as global educators. So this is something that, that, that has benefits for the schools. Um, getting started, well, uh, I think the best way is to look at the materials that you already have. Do the materials actually um, include anything on the sustainable development goals. If they do, fantastic. Then your, you know, your life has been made a lot easier. Um, and then, if not, to make small changes in your current curriculum to increase the focus. And we'll look at some ways uh, later on. Um, and where possible, obviously, link the goals, link uh, to the, the local context um, or the context that you're teaching in. Absolutely. Um, and a good way to introduce the goals is through something called the world's largest les lesson, uh, which you can find here at this link uh, on Vimeo or uh, here uh, on this website. The references will be at the end of the talk. Uh, and this is a very, very good way of introducing um, the, uh, the sustainable development goals and the idea of of the importance of the goal. So we don't have time right now to look at the video, so please do go away uh, and have a look at the video, have a look at the website, and then you can use the video to start the discussion. Um, obviously, age appropriate, depending on the level of your students as well. Um, and then we can encourage learners to choose the goal to focus on, and then to design some sort of campaign, perhaps, to raise awareness in the school and the community. Um, you know, with practical suggestions on how to meet the goal. Um, start small and then uh, build up. For example, uh, here's one idea, a friendly exchange campaign, which focuses here, or highlights rather, uh, the goal number 12, um, which is resumer, uh, uh, responsible consumer or responsible consumption and production. Um, and the students, for example, plan uh, a swap -arama or something similar with friends uh, of clothing, toys, uh, whatever, that they no longer use or need that they can then swap with friends. And through the activities, learners think about, well, how we use resources and, and the cycle even of consumption, perhaps for older students. Um, we said this, you know, link goals to classes that you're already teaching. If you're already teaching, you did all communication, then we can link in, for example, the second development no hunger, uh, learners can review, analyze stories about hunger in the news and, and in media, again, depending on the age of your students. A unit on water, which is very common, links very nicely to clean water and sanitation goal, uh, goal number six. Uh, for example, these are for older learners, they could investigate the history of global droughts or reincidence of multiple diseases and then put that into a presentation, for example, in English, or a poster or something similar. Um, these are just ideas. Um, and a very, very good resource um, is called Project Everyone, 
um, which links very, very nicely with the sustainable development goals. Again, don't have time to go into a lot of detail uh, with this, but please uh, do have a look, uh, Google it, find the link, and then go in and have a look at what they're doing. And, and there's, there is lots of material there that we can make use of. Um, so, I mean, there are different ways of, of approaching this. Um, one idea would be to use a goal per term or even more. Um, think about uh, projects around a particular goal. And there's an opportunity for us to employ project-based learning methodology, for example. Um, I think it's important to have concrete and practical actions that are based on the goal. So the project should, uh, should end in a concrete um, action, something that the students do or create uh, that exemplifies and promotes the goal. Um, there's plenty of material available, open source, Oxfam has lesson plans, advice on integrating themes into the classroom, uh, practical action. Again, these are, uh, I'll provide the links uh, at the end, uh, includes free resources for teachers. It's called Practical Action website. Um, and there are also important partnerships like the British Council as well, that we can go to and look for material uh, and even get involved as well uh, institutionally with the British Council, for example. And talking of the British Council, this is an excellent publication, uh, which I would recommend that you have a look at. It's about 200 and something pages long. Um, so it's quite a long document, but you can dip into it, skim it, scan for, for, for what you want to look at. Um, and it is specifically all about how to integrate global issues into the language classroom. And it has particular reference to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So this is definitely, definitely, definitely worth having a look at. Um, and then a final reflection: um, Why, you know, why should we be including SDGs, the Sustainable Goals, in our teaching? And the reflection actually comes from the British Council's document, and I've taken it and I'm going to use it here. And you have to imagine a conversation between a teacher and a member of the public, just, you know, um, anybody uh, from the public. Uh, and the member of public, you know, approaches the teacher and says, well, what do you do? And the teacher says, well, I'm a teacher. Um, okay, what do you teach? I teach people, says the teacher. Um, what do you teach them? The member of public asks, well, I teach them English. You mean, ah, grammar, verbs, nouns, pronunciation, conjugation, articles, particles, negatives, interrogative, that sort of thing. Yeah, that too. What do you mean, that too? Well, I also try to teach them how to think and feel, show them inspiration, aspiration, cooperation, participation, consolation, innovation. I help them think about globalization, exploitation, confrontation, incarceration, discrimination, degradation, subjugation, how inequality brings, how inequality brings poverty, how intolerance brings violence, how need is denied by greed, how isms become prisons, how thinking and feeling can bring about healing. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe you should just stick to language, forget about anguish. You can't change the world. But if I did that, I'd be a cheater not a teacher. And I think that's a fantastic reflection. I think that's something that, that sums up really why we should be including the Sustainable Development Goals as part of our teaching. Um, if we can teach the verb to be, if we can teach um, relative clauses and conditional sentences, we can help students understand what's going on in the world and raise awareness of the global issues that affect uh, the planet at the moment and that's um, it from me thank you very very much uh, for listening in i will leave you with the references which are here and uh, i think that the uh, that this will be available through the british council platform for a while so don't worry about writing them down um, if you have a phone, take a screenshot or a, or a, or a photo of the capture, but they will be available uh, for you to consult later on. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching and for listening.